Hey everyone, we're here today in Tijuana at one of my favorite traditional restaurants. It's Cien Años with my good friend, Chef Jose Sparza. Cien Años has been open for 27 years and among other Mexican classics, he serves one here uh, that's a little unusual maybe for people north of the border, but has its roots in Mesoamerican cuisine. Uh, it's edible insects. So today we're gonna try some edible insects prepared in kind of high cuisine style with my friend, Jose Esparza. Jose, how are you, man? Very good, thank you. Good, good thank to have you on the good. show today. Tell us a little bit about the insects we're gonna try today. Okay, um, today we're gonna make two different sauces mm -hmm. that um, very traditional. That's the way people eat these insects. Mm -hmm. They make the sauce and they put it in a corn tortilla and uh, that's how they, they eat it. And then we're gonna make a, a, a dish to complement with this sauce. So okay. we're gonna go a little step beyond. So we're gonna have them in a very traditional way, yes. and then we're gonna try them in a more chef-y yes. way. Yes. Okay. Okay. okay, great, so all right. You want us to start with the chinequiles? Let's do, and okay. tell us what the chinequiles are. Uh, the chinequiles are the, the worms that they grow on the roots of the agave. Mm -hmm. Ma the maguey, actually. They're not the agave. Um, and when they're eating the roots uh, and the rains come, the, the water brings them out and mm -hmm. people start picking them. Okay. You have to cook them uh, live. While they're uh, still alive. While they're still alive. Okay. Because they segregate a, a special oil mm -hmm. that it gives them the taste. Oh, interesting. So okay. it's a very simple sauce. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna put uh, tomatillo, mm. uh, a little bit of onion. Okay. It has garlic already there, mm -hmm. and we're gonna got it in the matate. Yes, here. it's like a, it's a raw sauce. It's not cooked. It, uh, you don't peel the the tomatillos. You keep the skin on for you additional keep flavor. The, yes. And if you want it to be like spicy, you're gonna be put uh, uh, serrano. Okay. If you don't want to be that spicy, you put a jalapeno. Mm -hmm. The jalapeno will give you a more herbal taste okay. than the serrano, mm -hmm. and the serrano will make it a little uh, hotter. Give it some, some fire. Yeah, so I've, I've had serranos a lot of times in the past, Jose, and my face literally drips. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a good serrano. Right. You, ever, you saw the movie uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yes. When, the, when the, the Germans, the German soldiers, their faces melt? Yes. That's me. <laughs> and it, uh, you will see when we start making it, mm -hmm. the, the cover of, uh, of the skins of the tomatillo will remain intact and we're going to pull them out okay. afterwards. Okay, so you get the flavor out of yes, them. Yes, yes, exactly. And then you discard the peel. Yes. Got it. Don't peel them because they have a lot of flavor mm -hmm. and you're just going to, uh, we're going to take them out. Okay. And the stone also will give them a special flavor. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty simple. Okay. Change the flavor? Well, it will change the flavor mm -hmm. because one, uh, it will, like all the skins, 
will like be like uh, broken up into that. Yes, mm -hmm. and we don't we don't want that. And also because uh, the stone gives a special flavor. Mm -hmm. And it's lava stone. Yes. Yes. Yeah. There you can you can find uh, mocajetes like this that are that are uh, formed or made with. Uh, cement or concrete, but it's really the lava stone yes. that's the traditional. Yeah, the darker it is, thing. the better. The better, okay. So we're gonna take the skins out, and then we're gonna put uh, maybe half of it. Muy picoso. No, this is a yeah. jalapeno. Oh, this is the jalapeno. This yes. isn't the serrano yet, okay. Yes. And uh, you want it spicy? Or not? A little spicy. Okay. Why not? Yes, a little bit. Spicy. And that's enough. <laughs> yeah. Maybe just short of face melting. Spicy. Yeah, okay. We're there. Excellent. And this is a great workout. If you look at oh, it, yeah. Jose's arm, yeah. it's probably like this much bigger than his left arm. <laughs> it is. Okay, we're gonna take this skin. Alright. Out. If you see, it's just the skin. Just the skin. Yes. Okay. We got all the flavor we needed out of that skin, so yes. it's it's and then we just put the chiniquiles. Okay, so here come the, uh, the, the worms, the fried worms. Yes. If you want it like to be, uh, have more taste of the worms, less mm -hmm. taste, but this is like a, I think I'm gonna put a little bit of salt. Okay. Just a touch. Yes. There's another skin here. Wow. Looking good. Now, now we're gonna check. Okay. Do a little little taste test here. Yeah, taste. Okay. Yeah. You got it. Yep. And Perfect. now some tortillas. Okay. And tell us where these tortillas are from. Oh, uh, this is just okay. uh, we make them here. Uh huh. They're uh, yellow corn. Yellow corn. Okay. And. A little bit of the sauce on there. Quien quiera probarla, son bienvenidos. And that's how people mm. eat them in the south like that. They just make the sauce. It's delicious. And they just put in the, in the corn tortillas. Mm -hmm. And they just have the... It's, 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 I mean, it's like a, like a traditional um, a salsa verde. Yeah. It's got that really good earthy taste, yeah, I think, from smoky the gusana. Taste, very yes. smoky, very delicious. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's really good. And insects are a great source of protein, right, yes. Jose? Very expensive source of protein. Mm -hmm. Like a, a pound of uh, chiniquiles, right mm -hmm. now it's about $80. Mm -hmm. One pound. Oh, it's a lot because they don't weigh right. much. It's a lot, but still. $80. No, so so they're not farmed. Or are they just like no. foraged from the wild? They, is that they, how people get yes, them? Yes, okay. they cannot be farmed. Mm -hmm. Usually when the agave is dying, they start eating the roots and that's when people get them. Usually have to they take that they take out the agave. Mm -hmm. Oh the maguey, sorry, I always got confused. Mm -hmm. The maguey and they have to pull all the maguey out to get them. So it's, it's very labor intensive, a lot of work. Yes, and, um, and usually to keep them alive, mm -hmm. they put them in a big uh, clay uh, casseroles. Oh, like a big clay pot. And mm -hmm. they put the pieces of agave, though, so they, they keep eating the agave. Okay, okay, and then that adds to the flavor too. Uh, is yes, and they grow them, they, they're smaller, they grow a little bigger, mm -hmm. and once they're in a, enough, uh, big enough, mm -hmm. they cook them. Okay, okay. Let's let's try one here just by yeah, itself. Just let's, let's see what the taste is. So um, I, I am a personally a fan of uh, edible insects in Mexico, oh, so okay. the only face I'm going to make is one of pure delight. Mm -hmm. A little nuttiness. Yes. Um, smoky. Yes. Just maybe a touch. Is there a little bit of salt in there too? Just no, a touch? Nothing. No salt. Nothing That's just all natural. It. Yes. Really delicious. I like it. All right, what's next? Okay. Welcome. We are here with another one of the special guests that we have. Her name is Ana Diaz de Gurria. 
Her love for fashion was inspired by watching her mother cope with becoming a widow by immersing herself into the world of fashion. Her mother went into becoming an specialized dressmaker in ball gowns and wedding dresses for more than 30 years. Anna joined her first as an apprentice and then as a collaborator when she was just 14 years old. My gosh. Anna is also the director of Innova Moda, a platform dedicated to promoting and boosting the growth of the fashion industry in Baja California, developing new opportunities for young designers, models, photographers, hairdressers, makeup artists, and many others. Welcome, Anna. Welcome to the show. Our borders, right? That is that is beautiful, and what a way to describe it, right? You you have um, multi uh, a city that is receiving constantly every day people from all over the world, and here you are with a beautiful team of artists that are just making you know, history. Tell us a little bit about what are some of the um, uh, the new things that are coming up or what, what has made uh, Baja being on the spot of fashion. Because I know you went to Milan.
wonderful to see. Like every day, like the morning fashion, the midday fashion, the nightlight fashion, you know, you guys continue to innovate. Thank you so much for joining us and for being here today. <laughs>
that's that's always there's always like a way to make it unique. Yes. I always like find myself like writing, you know, like themes or like just like yeah, like things that like haven't been written yet. Oh, thank you. Well, you brought the guitar for a reason, so we're really excited to hear a little piece of anything you want. Nice. Boom. I, I've made it in English. I'll try to like blend in. Well, not you can say it in English. You can say it anywhere you want. This is a Spanglish show, so go ahead. I'm not crying, you're crying. <laughs> that was beautiful. Oh my God, what a pleasure. And oh my gosh, wow. And from here, oh my God, we're going to go with Tacos with Muchachos. This is incredible. Thank you so much and thank you for coming to our show. Hi guys and welcome to the next installment of Tacos with Muchachos. I'm here with my good muchacho today, Francisco Perez, aka Paco or Paco the Taco. He's my taco guru in Tijuana. He showed me just about everything I need to know here. And Paco's also uh, two thirds of the Three Amigos Taco Tours. That's me, Paco, and our friend Fernando Cuevas. Uh, and we have a tour coming up at the end of the May, but we're here right now at Marisco's Walter. Paco, tell us about this place. Well, this is a place famous for the, his uh, tacos de uh, mariscos, which is seafood. Uh -huh. And we will try very good tacos here. Okay, terrific. And what are some of the specialties here, Paco? Okay, one of the specialties is, uh, well, they have like uh, uh, octopus, they have uh, uh, shrimp, but the uh -huh. famous one, is uh, one of the famous ones for me, and the, that I like more is McLean. McLean. Which is uh, um, fin tuna, uh -huh. tuna fin with uh, marlin. Tuna fin? Yeah. Really? People have tuna fin on tacos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who would have thought? Well, it, that's 
very special. I mean, you cannot find this uh, Tuna fin in everywhere. Uh -huh. and, and where did that start? Did that start in Sinaloa? Is that something they do yeah. on the coast? Yeah, the they Mexican are from coast? They is, These dishes are from Sinaloa. It's uh -huh. inspired in Sinaloa. And also, they, they've been here for 15 years or a little bit more. Wow. So, so the tuna fin, I mean, that's really gelatinous, right? I mean, that's kind of a weird texture thing, but... It's a weird, weird but very good. Okay. And also very health, for, very good for health. Very good for health. Okay. Yeah. Trust. Let's try one, shall Let's we? Let's try one. All right. Wow, so this is a tuna fin taco. Tuna fin taco. With smoked marlin. That just looks insane. What about, totally what, do you, insane. what do you think? Um, I, I think I'm ready to eat again, <laughs> friend. Uh, so what, they, they dip it in a little bit of the tallow here too? The, the, we've got a little dorado on the taco? A little bit, yeah. It, it goes dorado, and also you can add any kind of the salsas they have. Okay. They and have uh, chile de arbol, they have uh, habanero. And you said they make them all here in-house, these salsas. So they're not messing around. Okay, so here's the tuna fin. You can see it's very gelatinous. It's got that shimmy, shimmy shake to it. Um, and then we've got this just beautiful chunks of uh, smoked marlin here. And I've had smoked marlin many times in Ensenada, uh, and it's always a treat. Mm-hmm. Delicious. Little bit of the Serrano salsa. I, you know, Serrano, I, I, I can take a lot of heat, Paco, yeah. but for some reason, Serrano always goes straight to my head. If I eat too much Serrano, my face starts dripping, my eyes get wet, my nose runs, you know, but it hurts so good. All right. All right, you guys, so here we are. Marisco's Walter, uh, Colonia Vente uh, de Noviembre, and we're going to bite into this tuna fin and smoked Tuna, uh, smoked marlin taco right now. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's almost like having mushrooms on your taco. The smoke of the marlin very good, mm -hmm. and the gelatinous of the of the tuna tuna fin. The, the, the tuna fin itself doesn't have a, a lot of flavor. I mean, it's almost like it's there for the yeah. for the texture and for the health benefit. No, it's a, it has a very delicate. Flavor. That marlin is delicious. Yeah. Where do they get their marlin? Do they go to Ensenada for that, Paco? You know? They get it from Mazatlan. So they're getting their, their marlin straight from Sinaloa. We're going to top off our tacos here, Paco, with a little bit of this caldo, the soup. What the is soup. this called? Caldo vici. Vici means like uh, no clothes. Oh, so it's naked. So it's naked. And, I'm not and, looking. I'm not looking. <laughs> so it's, this is naked because uh, it doesn't have any any of the seafood and any of the, any of the meat. It's just the, the meat. just the broth and exactly. some of what is, what is some just cabbage? Cabbage and, and onions. Just naked soup, people. Exactly. You can add some salsa if you like uh -huh. and lemon. I think that's delicious. That's really good. Um, it's very peppery. Do yeah. they add a lot of pepper to this, or is that just the natural broth taste? Yeah. No, they add pe pepper. Yeah. Really good. Mm. Very good. Well, that's pretty common when you go someplace, whether it's Tijuana and Baja, to get mariscos, uh, or even in San Diego, if you go to a mariscos truck there, you always get the little bit of broth to have, usually before you eat your taco. Uh, but this is really delicious, Paco. Well, I think it's time to go to the next place. Paco, let's, you let's ready? Go. Yeah, let's do I'm it. ready. Let's We're go. out of here. Thank you.